I cannot spit on you and give you HIV. Really? Um, Even actually, interestingly, uh, people don't, well, maybe you would know more about this now because I remember like the, all the fear and hysteria around it. But even blood, like if, if, like, if I cut myself, no, right. it's going to die in the air. So basically, so, like, if you cut yourself, I have a cut and I touch yeah. you. Well, no, I need I mean, blood if we did, like, blood, that, if but, we but did, if like, I cut blood myself, brothers. it's like that blood yeah. is going to hit it's the air. It's not that it's HIV die. blood okay, is it has out to be there direct infecting blood, and then if it's dry like, blood, it's not really contact. Yeah. No. Right. So it's blood to blood contact okay. or uh, blood to semen uh, or uh, vaginal fluids. Right. Those are really the, the primary things. Uh, generally, uh, you're much less likely if you're uh, the insertive partner having sex, you're much less likely to get HIV. Though you insertive. Still can. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, meaning uh, women are much more at risk than See. men in a heterosexual uh, right. situation. And that's uh, a big problem, actually, because even now, even 10 or 15 years later, I mean, it was a big problem 15 or 20 years ago where women didn't understand that they were more at risk. Mm -hmm. You know? Then. Yeah, but it's funny because people still don't get it. But whatever. Yeah. Anyway, that's why we're yeah. talking Well, about. no, but that's why uh, we're having the dialogue because I do think you're totally 100% right. I think there's so much fear wrapped around it. I think that, you know, you were given those extra lies, and I want you to talk about that a little bit more, too, but to share well, this you know, information with so many people, mm -hmm. because as we pull the, the, the curtain back to yeah. see who we truly are as people and what we really... I, I almost died in 98, <coughs> and you know I had full-blown AIDS at that point. Um, I had been very lucky, and then I stopped being lucky, and mm -hmm. it was time. And thank God they had the new drugs out. And, um, you know, but between that experience and then I got sober and sort of my whole life changed. And, you know, it's funny because in getting, in the getting sober thing, you sort of learn to tell your story. And mm -hmm. then I, mm -hmm. you know, you like learn to not be ashamed anymore. Yeah, but it's just like, yeah, yeah. Question from the audience. So, oh, we have a question. We have a question from wow. the audience. Okay, we want to know that, that would be Hi. Oh. I, I do have a question. And, and, um, hearing what you said, and I remember in the 80s, when we had the outbreak with HIV, and it, it, it was really fascinating. But my question to you, in terms of percentage, in terms of a lesbian relationship, what is the percentage of one contracting HIV from the other? Yeah, um, and how does that work since it's It can happen. It is extremely unlikely if you are both uh, lesbian women who have never had sex with men have never used injection drugs. Uh, so it's much less likely in those situations. So if you're monogamous, you've been both, say you've both been tested and six months ago, three months ago, and then you're completely monogamous, uh, it's very unlikely that, that anybody could transmit anything. Um, <clears throat> the CDC just had what they called last year the first case of uh, woman to woman HIV transmission in which the uh, the women one woman was HIV positive and they used uh, sex toys they exchanged sex toys without using condoms or cleaning the sex toys in between uh, women and they were had very rigorous sex which means that there was blood mm -hmm. um, so there was blood and vaginal fluid mm -hmm. and they believe that's what the transmission was yeah. now mind you that's the only confirmed case. We have plenty of lesbians living with HIV at this point, uh, but most of them, uh, you know, acquired that HIV not through other women uh, who had been lesbians. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. That okay. Makes a lot of sense. Yes. Thank you for answering my question. Yeah, lesbian. I kind of like to say uh, lesbians, uh, you know, were the safest. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but you know. So, you know. <laughs> and the good news is, is that, because it's so easy to get caught up on the, on, on talking about the medical stuff or on the sex stuff, and then to think that the community in a weird way is defined by, by the sex or the medical stuff or the death or the fear of death and all of that. And the reality is, is there's a whole world of, of, of positive people that are out living their lives, being in the world, you know, every single day, going shopping, having kids, mm -hmm. you know, going to school, being in careers, and like, 
I think that's part of what's so great about what Plus Magazine is doing is celebrating life. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm actually working on a project now I've got in development with um, actually Carlton Wellborn. Oh, who, okay. Uh -huh. And uh, a young Paz actor. He was actually born with HIV, and his name is uh, Joseph Kibler. Okay. And uh, he did a documentary called Walk On. Which Brilliant. Was really, was so really great. Joseph yeah. and I are in, in, and Sherry Lewis, we want to have okay. her. But it's going to be all pause actors mm -hmm. and working in kind of like, um, kind of like an uh, GMHC or APLA kind of clinic environment mm -hmm. and, and just telling all these stories because mm. really, you know, it, it's time for us to talk about survival and, and then, and yeah, just, living. and in a weird way, like best day ever. The problem is, is like, then you have to survive and like, what a luxury problem that is. But now we get to worry about like 401ks and do I, what nursery do I send my kid to and you know, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, all that good mm. stuff. I want to thank both of you. I want to ask you one other quick question. I know you uh, starred in Ron and Laura Take Back America. Hilarious movie. You got to check that out as well. So um, when are we going to get to see that? Molly? That should be coming out in the fall. Uh, we don't have the exact uh, premiere dates yet. Uh, we just got back from another film festival. We've been on the circuit with that. Won a ton of awards. Yeah, we've gotten like 16 nominations and awards, so it's been yeah. really exciting. It's been a really exciting time, and I just have to thank everybody here at Watch Hollywood TV. I have to thank Diane. I have to thank you, Cassie, because you've actually helped me with so many things. I have been so lucky because of the angels that have surrounded me, and it would not have been possible without so many people that have helped um, I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm the luckiest man on earth. Thank you so much, Mel. Thank you so much, Diane. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> next up is uh, um, Andy Soccer, and he's the founder of The Lavender Effect. Yay, Andy. We Andy's love Andy. coming on next. Yeah. So uh, thank you so he's much, awesome. Diane. Thank you so much, Mel. Thank uh, you. Fantastic with Plus Magazine. Fantastic with your two movies coming out. Thank, thank you. you. We'll be right back at Watch, watch Hollywood.tv. Also, visit us at print men, M-E-N dot net, for all of your printing needs. So make sure that you visit us at print, M-E-N dot net, for all your printing needs.